you walked away. Then okay, okay. Thank you so much for staying with Citizen TV. My name is Lillian Muli, and my guest in studio tonight is the president of the Rotary Club of Nairobi East. Rotary is about leaders who get together and take on community challenges. She wears many hats and is also the CEO of Branding Beyond Borders, which is about connecting great minds globally. She's also the managing partner at Saltway Investments, a real estate company, and a senior partner at Partox women. Nana, Nana Wanjao is passionate about women empowerment and that's why she's our guest on Women in Leadership tonight. Good evening. <laughs> Great to see Good you. Good evening and, and I will start by correcting you. Yeah. <laughs> I am actually no longer the president of Rotary in yeah. Nairobi East. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh, my tenure ended on 30th of June okay. of this year. Mm -hmm. But, but once I, the president, always the president, president, always the president. So you're not the first one. Everybody keeps yeah. calling me president, mm -hmm. and I keep saying I am the immediate past president. Immediate of past Rotary. president. Also, your tenure just ended. Just ended. So I guess the people will get used to it. Okay. Yeah. So this is the stunning Nana Wanjao. <laughs> Amazing, we didn't plan this look. No, we didn't, <laughs> but we look great. We look great. <laughs> so we know everybody is watching like what we're saying. Um, so you walked away from a lucrative corporate job as an IT systems analyst. Did you have a plan uh, when you walked? A lot of people get very comfortable in employment and wonder when the right time to leave is. What informed your decision to walk? I think I'm one of those lucky people who doesn't get comfortable, at least comfortable enough. To, 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 you know, get swallowed into any environment. Mm -hmm. I always knew that one thing for sure, when my kids came, I wanted to be home. Regardless of whether it was in fashion or unfashionable. Mm -hmm. For me, what was important is when my kids come, I'm going to be home. So it was a very easy decision to get out of my IT high-flying job and take a back seat and become a homestay mom. Mm -hmm. 12 years. Stay home mom for 12 years. For 12 years. But again, that was the transition from uh, employment into entrepreneurship. That was a natural transition for me. Mm -hmm. Because once I decided I wanted to stay home, the next question was, we needed an extra income. Our lifestyle, we're not going to drop just because of that. So what am I going to do? Mm -hmm. My husband is an architect, and our natural transition was into real estate. So that is how we formed Saltaway Investment Limited. Mm -hmm. We are a real estate company, middle, low income, high-end office space, and residential hotels. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, and let's get into branding beyond borders you're also the ceo of branding beyond borders so tell us about uh, this and, and what you're all about branding beyond borders is about connecting minds globally i have always wanted a global platform when i started branding beyond borders by the way uh, about <coughs> interestingly four months ago branding beyond borders did not exist as we know it today mm -hmm. When I launched uh, 23rd of April this year, I launched something totally different. Mm -hmm. And that has been a journey on its own. Mm -hmm. uh, I launched under uh, a platform that was given to me, you know, to, to launch a business, a platform that was actually, uh, what do we call it? You know, when you're given an, a platform to launch from, it's a better than launching from ground floor. Mm -hmm. It's like launching from... So when you talk about connecting global minds, are these business leaders, are these, what type of minds are you connecting? Uh, branding Beyond Borders, we scout for speakers from around the world mm -hmm. and we bring them to a, for an African experience. And I say that deliberately for an African experience because I want all these people to experience Africa from our eyes. With a mandatory stop in Kenya. Mm -hmm. In Kenya, we create a platform where our own gurus, our own professionals, movers and shakers, mm -hmm. together on this platform, we have an exchange of ideas, cultures, we provoke, we challenge branding, your personal brand or your corporate brand beyond the borders. Mm -hmm. And please note, borders can be physical, but they can also be mental and emotional. How do you mean? Well, having been in the corporate world, this is what I noticed. The higher we go, when we start off in the workforce, we are 50-50, 50% men, 50% women. But the higher we go, 
women we seem to stagnate somewhere mm -hmm. I don't think anybody tells you stop right here mm -hmm. no mm -hmm. We have always said, oh, it's because we go out and start families and when we come back, we are two, three years behind our male counterparts, which is true. Mm -hmm. I've come back, I'm like starting from zero, yeah. you know. My male counterparts have already moved on. Mm -hmm. But who tells me I cannot come mm -hmm. back? Who tells me that now that I'm a senior manager, I can't hit the corner office? Who tells me I can't sit on the boardroom table? Mm -hmm. Who? Nobody tells us we can't do that. It's, yeah. it's almost like uh, we ourselves as women, we also have our own mental borders mm -hmm. that define that this is as far as we want to reach. But don't you think the employer also has a role to play in that the minute you go and start having babies and get married, they automatically assume that you've You know what, Lillian, you can blame and you can point figures at the external for as much as you want. Bottom line is, it takes me personally to decide if I can't get to the corner office in this institution I can find another platform mm -hmm. I came back and I started scratch branding beyond borders I told you did not exist now uh, 23rd of November this month Kenya National Chamber of Commerce and Industry Centum branding beyond borders we have a CEO power breakfast mm -hmm. with Joseph Pine. Mm -hmm. Joseph Pine was a dream uh, four months ago. This is now the award-winning author. This is the award-winning author, Joseph Pine. Uh, we have a CEO breakfast. We have a seminar. Okay, so when you tell people about a CEO breakfast, does this apply to all CEOs, even those who are CEOs of their small little companies? Okay. Or are you talking <laughs> about... First of all, there is limited seating space. That mm -hmm. is one. Secondly, because of the caliber of the speaker. Uh, there is also a caliber of CEO that is invited to attend this breakfast. Mm -hmm. But don't worry, CEOs of smaller SMEs, which are extremely important, we have a seminar on 24th, full day seminar at the Radisson. Mm -hmm. So we have catered both for the high end CEO and for the CEO of the SMEs. Mm -hmm. And let's talk about uh, Power Talks Women, which you are a senior partner with. What are the objectives? Of course, talking to, listening to you, I can tell you're a power woman. Um, uh, but what, is, what are the objectives of Power Talks Women? Power, it's not Power Talks Women. It is Power Woman International. Mm -hmm. Because we, had, we relaunched. After launching on 23rd of April this year, we immediately had to relaunch the product into Power Woman International. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you what Power Woman International is all about. I come from a lineage of very powerful women. Maybe that's why I look powerful because <laughs> I was raised by my grandmother who was a widow, who is a widow up mm -hmm. to now. I was raised also later by my own mother, my maternal mother. And both of these women were powerhouses in their own right. Power Woman International is about, again, an alignment with branding beyond borders we create now a specific platform for the woman for empowering the woman mm -hmm. I work with a local champion when I say I work with a local champion there is this woman who's already an achiever who's already achieved accomplished in whatever industry we challenge her to tell her you can go further if you're a local champion in Kenya, guess what? There is Uganda, there is South Africa, there is Morocco, there is Australia, there is a whole globe out there waiting for you. Mm -hmm. So we create these platforms that train, engage, network women again to take them across the borders. Mm -hmm. But beyond that, because my background as Nana, if you know anything about me, I'm driven by two things, family and service. Everything I do must have a service angle behind it. Power Woman International. We leave no one behind. Mm -hmm. When you empower a woman, you empower her entire home, her entire community, nation. I'm a mother of boys, by the way. Mm -hmm. Two boys. Wow, and look at yeah. her figure. <laughs> I had to throw that in. <laughs> I just had to. Yeah. But I believe when you empower a woman, the boy child is taken care of, the girl child is taken care of, the widow, the destitute, the forgotten, everyone is taken care of. A woman, we leave no one behind. Mm -hmm. So w our CSR angle is we build houses for the ostracized widow in the country and the forgotten widow. Mm -hmm. 
ostracized widow is very simple i don't know if you know about some of our cultures in our land our beautiful kenya but there are some cultures that uh, once your husband dies you are required to engage in cleansing rituals which involve sexual acts and then you are supposed to be inherited now these women in these cultures when they reject these cultures they are ostracized by society mm -hmm. so we look for that widow because she is really the worst of the worst do you society. actually go deep into, no, into the rural don't. areas and we, are, we personally don't go around the country mm -hmm. but there we have partnered with rona foundation mm -hmm. uh, rona foundation is a foundation that has database for all the widows in this country mm. but we give them our profile of the widow we look after mm -hmm. the ostracized and the forgotten widow right. the forgotten widow is very interesting it's simply that she has been forgotten by the society mm. it's like when her husband died she stopped to exist in the eyes of the society right mm. now I'd like to ask you do you feel overwhelmed um, sometimes like you're spreading yourself thin you're into service <laughs> rotary you're, you're doing all these things you're a mother as well does it get overwhelming sometimes and how do you deal with that I th I'm, I'm such a bundle of energy. I've got so much energy. As I told you, I took 12 years to just look after my family, uh, my kids, raise my kids. So it's almost like I have rested for 12 years. Yeah. Now I'm ready to work. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but to answer your question, because I know where you're coming from, yes, it does get um, quite overwhelming sometimes. But when I climbed the Kilimanjaro, there's something I learned. There are a few lessons I learned from the mountain. One is called take a knee when you're on the mountain. When you're on the mountain and you reach a point where you feel you can't breathe, you can't take another step, your guide tells you, take a knee. Mm -hmm. Now, he doesn't tell you, sit down. <laughs> no, he tells you, take a knee. And it's literally that. Imagine you're standing or you're walking and he tells you, take a knee. It means you literally put one knee down. Only one. Mm -hmm. Not the two of them. Mm -hmm. The other one is sort of in suspense. The other one is down. It means you are taking your breath for one, two, three, five, ten seconds. Then you're up, you go. So when I feel overwhelmed in life, I take a knee. I reach a point where I internalize, you know, where I am, why am I doing this again, mm -hmm. again, why am I really here? Um, I find God, I reconnect, I re-energize, and then I play with my kids. Yeah. I play. I think, I, I love that you've spoken about your children throughout this interview, and that is amazing. Oh. Sometimes you get caught up, you know, in the hustle and bustle of life, and, and you know, don't spend as much time with our children but I'd like as we close um, I think what's come across here for me is servant leadership and the fact that you have talked about service and giving back mm. um, so for, for for our viewer back at home that person that is uh, so heavily immersed in career and family and and all these you know things in life what are what are the pleasures of service giving back what has that done for you as a person how has that shaped you as Nana? My mother, Dr. Hilda, is the late. May God rest her soul in peace. One thing I remember so clearly, the reason I am who I am in service is because my mother was a Rotarian. So I was born into Rotary. I was born into service. That's all I know. We went for every medical camp. Whenever we were on holiday, it was service this, service that, service that. So it's really part of who I am. But let me tell you, there are many ways, I told you, when I, when I feel overwhelmed, I take a knee and I, I, I re-energize. God re-energizes me. But when I'm in service, I interact with God through his people in a manner that I cannot articulate beyond that. I really can't articulate it. The pleasure of service is that people think... Like I was in Kajado a few days ago, groundbreaking for a widow's house. And the chief of the area, when he got to speak, he said, people said God stopped giving manna. You know, when the mm -hmm. Israelites were in Egypt, he said, people said the manna stopped. You know, it used to fall apart from the sky or yeah. something. 
He said, according to him, this is the 21st century manner. Who comes from nowhere when they don't know you to build you a house? Mm -hmm. Who? When I am in service, people think I am helping them. But when I leave them, I am so enriched beyond what I have given mm -hmm. physically. Whether you're calling it cement, whether you're calling it unga, I am so enriched beyond what I can monetize on what I give them. Right. Yeah. And uh, that's a good point <laughs> to, that's a good note to end that we're talking to. And you, by the way, you're very fashionable. Tell us a little bit about that. We're talking to you. <laughs> and I know you blog a little bit about fashion as well. Well, I, 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 I used to. I, uh, I probably should pick it up again because the call is, is there. You yeah. must blog. Yeah. Fashionable. Fashion is internal. Fashion is internal. You can, you, you can buy clothes. You can buy shoes. You can buy accessories, expensive ones, diamonds and all that. And yet you may not be fashionable, you may not be gracious. Fashion is internal. The day you learn to love yourself, your curves, your smile, your eyes, that's the day you will know what real fashion is. I know Anja, I could listen to you forever. <laughs> <laughs> she has served as the president of the Rotary Club of Nairobi East. She's a phenomenal lady and a bundle of energy. Thank you so much for finding Thank time you. to join us for Women in Leadership. Bernard is next with all the day sports.